Hey there, it's Nathan Crane, the Sustainable Runner, and I just got back from doing our first Tough Mudder in Colorado, and it was quite an amazing experience. So I'm going to show you some clips from the event, as well as uh, some of my insights about it, what I learned, um, and uh, just my overall experience. So that if you decide to do one, uh, you'll have a little bit more foresight about what to expect. Or if you've already done a Tough Mudder and just want to relive the experience, that's cool too. So Tough Mudder is typically a 10 to 12 mile run with about 20 obstacles spread out throughout the run. So it all depends on the location and the terrain, uh, whether it's really a trail run or more of a flat desert run. Uh, but we were in Colorado, we started at 9,500 feet elevation and we climbed this steep ski hill about 2,000 feet up to the top. So we were over 11,000 500 feet roughly at the top. So we camped at this gorgeous lake uh, in Frisco, Colorado. He's surrounded by mountains. Uh, went for a little run there the night before, did some stretching, and uh, went and headed up to the event the next day. The event was insane. There were thousands of people there. My guess is there was at least 10,000 people there. It was quite an experience, and it was really inspiring to see that many people at an event that requires you to be uh, fairly healthy uh, to complete. Now the bulk of it is definitely running, especially this event it was a beautiful single track trail pretty much uh, most of the way with uh, some dirt road, uh, more of a fire road on the way down. And at least 80% of the event is running. One guy we went past was complaining, he's like, I didn't know to sign up for a trail run. It's like, well, it's 10 miles, <laughs> you know, 20 obstacles. An obstacle only takes up you know, maybe 50 feet or so, a little less, sometimes a little more. The rest of that's going to be running, right? So uh, it's 80% running and 20%, I would say, upper body strength because you got to be able to pull yourself up and over the obstacles. Um, the cool thing about this event is that it's very collaborative. Everyone's supporting each other and helping each other. Um, let's say there's 5,000 people racing. There's only about, I think it was 88 people in the first wave, which is the competitive wave. That's the one my brother and I were signed up for. And everyone else really goes to obviously compete with themselves and push themselves and just have the challenge and the experience and the fun of, of experiencing that kind of event. Uh, the average time is about four hours to complete the course. And the number one guy finished it in about an hour 20 minutes. The number three guy finished it in an hour and 40 minutes. My brother and I finished it in just a little over two hours. And the crazy thing for us was we got there almost an hour ahead of time, but getting the shuttles, finding the drop bag place, finding the start line, all of that uh, ended, up, ended up making us late to the start line. So we go sprinting to the start line, they'd already taken off minutes before. So not only are we at the back of the pack, but we're even behind. So the next few miles uh, was really just pushing ourselves as hard as we could to catch up to everyone who already had a pretty big head start on us. And so it was fun. We started going obstacle after obstacle and we started running uphill pretty quickly. Um, and we just started passing people one by one. Um, we made it pretty much all the way to the end and had passed just over 50 people um, until we got to about the top 30. And uh, we were really sprinting and pushing it hard. It was intense cardio, it was intense running, but man, there were some really fit, healthy, fast people um, in that race. I mean, for the first guy to be able to finish at an eight minute per mile pace, and that includes uh, obstacles and 2,000 feet of elevation gain, that was really impressive. But some tips I want to share with you if you're thinking about signing up. Number one, you could always start with the half, that's five miles, uh, and I believe 10 obstacles, so it's a half mudder, right? So you could definitely do a smaller or shorter race, which would be a great entry point. The full tough mudder or the tougher mudder, um, either one tough mudder is, they're both the same, the tougher mudder is just starting at the first start wave earliest in the morning with the more competitive group the regular tough mudder is you know you start and you're just going to finish it uh, challenge yourself and not really care too much about pushing yourself uh, to the extreme of of uh, just pushing your limits and seeing how competitive you can be so either way the biggest recommendation i would make is get there the night before and get registered that's what we did there was barely anybody there uh, towards the end of the registration we got registered um, we had that done out of the way the next thing is get there an hour and a half early before your start time because it's crazy the next thing is carry a really light running vest or 
um, a waist belt or something where you can keep some snacks. You know, they said they were gonna have bananas and stuff at every aid station. I think it wasn't until the third or fourth aid station that they even had any bananas. So be prepared with your own snacks. Uh, they did have water at every aid station, so, we, so you really don't have to worry about carrying water, which is nice. The next thing is, is uh, know that it's a run. So um, be ready to run, either the five miles or 10 miles, or some of them are even 12 miles. Train your ability to run that distance. Now, some people walk most of it, and so that's okay too. If you're planning on walking it, really taking your time, that's okay. But if you want to, you know, be prepared to uh, finish it more competitively, make sure you can at least run that distance. And the final thing is make sure you're training your upper body at least a couple of months ahead of time, two to three days a week. You know, there are some things where you've got to pull yourself across uh, the monkey bars. There's uh, things we got to climb over the wall. You know, there's things we got to pull yourself up rope. So, you know, if you have no upper body strength, you're gonna have trouble getting over those obstacles. So make sure you're doing full body training at least a couple months before the event. And finally, I would say go with a friend or family member. It was so awesome. My brother and I got to do it together. My wife and kids came and my dad came and supported. We made a great camping trip out of it. Um, it was a really fun event and it was great experience for us. And you know, we had a good time uh, meeting people there and having laughs and, and pushing ourselves to, to see uh, you know how, how quick we could complete it. And, and it was a challenge and at the same time, it, it was definitely a lot of fun. So that's it. My first Tough Mudder is out of the way. The next thing in my sights is a 50K, a 31 mile ultra run through the mountains in Grants, New Mexico. That's September 30th. I'll be doing a lot more running. I just finished a two mile uh, recovery run just now and gearing up for getting into a lot more running leading up. I have about three months before the 50K. As always, I'll be sharing my journey along the way with you. Hopefully, uh, you get to learn things and share things with me. And we get to walk this path together in health and fulfillment and high performance. So thanks, I always appreciate you subscribing and sharing this video. And uh, as always, I look forward to your comments below. Thanks. Talk to you next time.